evening and welcome back. So the coronavirus, the World Health Organization warns of no silver bullet amid vaccine surge. The head of the World Health Organization has said that while there is hope for a vaccine against COVID-19, one might never be found. And that is due to complexities within the virus, uh, possibly due to genetic engineering, uh, suggesting that it's quite akin to HIV, but then you're going to get down the conspiracy rabbit hole. Needless to say, there are concerns that an effective vaccination will never be found because it could also be, as they've suggested, and as I've mentioned before, that if getting the virus, overcoming the virus, does not mean you're immune to the virus because of the mutations, which is the most likely explanation, then a vaccination wouldn't work either because the mutations of the virus would be far too rapid for a vaccination to be effective. And what you'd be hoping for is that the mutations are, although big enough to then cause harm to individuals, they're small enough to then be overcome by the scientists developing the vaccine. And unfortunately, that does not seem to match up as they had hoped, in which case we would not be able to get a vaccination for it. What does that mean? That means it becomes endemic. It's either seasonal as is likely the case or it is just an eternal problem or if you're really lucky you stop the spread of it and therefore it is dead that you'll reach the point where there'll be only one person in the world who is infected with a virus they are then isolated and they either overcome it or they die if they die, then of course their, their body is disposed of and most likely cremated uh, almost on site in order to prevent the virus from living. But either way, they've overcome it. They're not asymptomatic because they have killed the virus. Or at the very least, they have enough antibodies in their system to kill it sufficiently so that they no longer spread the virus. Because there is always a concern that if you've overcome a virus you will still spread it to other people even though you're not showing any symptoms anymore um, as is the case with things like smallpox of course when discovering america from columbus days the, the whole idea of biological warfare is bullshit in those days given as the gene theory and um understanding bacteria and viruses wouldn't be developed for a couple of centuries since then but nonetheless that is also feasible. If that is the case, you can never be free of it. Because even when people have overcome it, it is mutating, and therefore you spread, although the mutation within you has been slow enough that you've been able to overcome it, you will then come into contact with somebody else of whose version of COVID-19 has mutated differently, and then you give each other the new mutation of the virus, that you're not prepared for at all because it is far too different from the ones that you're used to and therefore you now have a full-blown infection of the Wu flu <laughs> and that seems to be all they're suggesting their response is that Mr Tedros implored people around the world to comply with measures such as social distancing, hand washing and mask wearing saying do it all so their solution is, this is life now. You have to abide by all these measures in order to survive, essentially. And this, this comes back to a very fundamental philosophical view, which is, would you rather live a day on your feet or life on your knees? Would you rather spend your life in servitude or die as a free man? And that is really what it comes down to. Do you prefer to live fast, die young, or live a long life but living in fear? Because from what they're suggesting, those are your two options. Of course, there is a third option, which is that the coronavirus isn't really that deadly. And what it would mean, seeing as the average age of death from coronavirus is older 
than the average life expectancy. It is not as if it's cutting years off your life, because it isn't. But the third option is that would now be another thing to take into consideration when people get older. Just like cancer or coronary heart disease, but not nearly as fatal. It would be likened to the flu or influenza, which is already a cause of death for older people, uh, along with pneumonia, uh, along with that kind of fatality. So th that that is the third option, which kind of correlates to the first of living free. Uh, obviously, I can't tell you the answer of that. I can only suggest what I would say, and then give you the facts and the evidence, and then you have to decide for yourself of what you would like to do. And I find it incredibly ironic, but nonetheless, still a fact of life, that the conservatives, who like to conserve things and keep tradition and not go beyond their bounds, are individualists and freedom-loving. That surely th there must be some mental disconnect that how the hell can traditionalist conservatives also then be freedom-loving individualist and encouraging people to go their own way and try new things because the latter is the hallmark of what liberals are supposed to do the idea of the political dichotomy is to say that you've got some people saying we shouldn't do new things because we have a system that works and we know that we're safe within these bounds, so let's keep doing what we're doing. And the other side is saying, but there's better stuff out there. Let's cross that hill or go through that valley and we will find something better on the other side. Too much conservation leads to stagnation and, of course, the society falls apart. But too much liberalism leads to spreading yourself out too thin or spreading the communities out too thin and, therefore they fall apart because there are no longer supply chains and they can't support themselves. And the same goes for your own life, though. Of course, you've got to know what you're doing and keep yourself with a level mast, but at the same time, you've got to be doing new things and growing and thriving, otherwise life isn't worth living and you will be bored and not find life worth living. And if life isn't worth living, then why live? What's the point in living if you don't feel alive? <laughs> to quote Goldeneye. But it, it is still true. However, for whatever incredulous reason that the Liberals don't seem to be holding up their end of the bargain, and instead of saying that government should control everything, and so the Conservatives seem to have to pull both parts themselves, or any right-wingers, any individualists, to say, well, yeah, there's some good tradition, and there's a lot of wise wisdom, but even imbued in that is saying that you should be doing new things, and trying things, and putting yourself out there, and taking risks. That even if Shakespeare said, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Which means, the experiences are often better than the outcomes. The journey is more important than the destination. It's not the ends justifies the means. It's that the means justifies the ends. That, <laughs> that, that is just <laughs> a ruling of life. And the Conservatives seem to be having to do both. They seem to be having to say... Okay, we understand this is what a political situation should be, but also from that, we understand that that's just how an individual should be. And therefore, we're saying all the individuals should run their lives like that, and in doing so, you've got your own balance, and people can make their own life choices. That because it's crevassed on individualism, that you will have some people who want to stay home and stay safe, and you will have some people who want to go out and take risks. And of course, the people who stay home and stay safe will probably average out with the people who wish to take risks. But, of course, the extremes will be on the risk-taking people. They will be the people who are criminals and in prison. But they will also be the people who are the highly successful business owners. Uh, because, of course, they will. Depending on the, the path that they wish to go down when they're taking those risks. That, of course, they will be the people who are the top athletes and sports performers. But, of course, they will be the people who are killed most in motorcycle accidents. That's just a, f a fact of life. And how the hell can it be that the so-called traditionalist conservatives are those people? It's ridiculous. But this is the way we've come to. And just to really, really, really hammer home the point of the lack of fatality from this disease, that 
Mr. Tedros said that mothers with suspected or confirmed coronavirus infection should be encouraged to continue breastfeeding. The benefits, he said, substantially outweighed the risks of infection. And yes, of course, that we know that breastfeeding is better than formula in terms of uh, intelligence, in terms of cardiovascular health, in terms of lung capacity, in terms of performance, in terms of body development. All these things, yes, of course, breastfeeding is better. And it does, in fact, also, of course, come back down to the diet that the mother has. But nonetheless, if we're concerned that the coronavirus is so deadly, not just for old people, but it's so risky to everybody, bear in mind, if it was just risky for old people, we'd say, hmm, you've retired, maybe you want to protect yourself. But bear in mind, of course, that state pensions are a con, it's a Ponzi scheme, and no government wishes to pay it because they're unfunded liabilities. So they'd say, well, let's just get rid of the old people because they're not contributing, we don't want to have to pay them, we'd rather just take, take, take and never give back. Then, surely, they'd say, well, yeah, then we, we want the workforce working, and we want the retired people to die. But simply, but bluntly, which, yes, I understand is horrific, but nonetheless, it's, it's how they would think. So... Yeah, by, by, say, by saying that it's not a problem for the infants. I mean, I, I understand it's extrapolation to say it's not a problem to up to middle age, but we've seen the evidence to show that it isn't, and therefore it really shouldn't be a problem, which goes back to my early point of saying that it's a problem when you get much older into your retirable age or OAP age, in which case it'll be one of the many things that you've got to be aware of that will kill you. And death is always sad. It's always a tragedy. I'm not making any exceptions to that whatsoever. I understand that. If a member of your family or somebody that you're close to dies, you will be heartbroken. No exceptions. Completely understand. However, everybody dies. Death is unavoidable. You have to die of something. So, we've made great strides in now being able to narrow it down to just coronary heart disease and cancer. But let's not forget that even just by introducing one new thing, and I understand you might be concerned about the slippery slope, but introducing one new thing of the Wu flu, then we're still doing substantially better than we were just decades ago. Have you ever considered that People don't die for old age anymore. That is, that is no longer a thing. That, of course, used to hear about, uh, well, you know, people get old and they just die from old age. That doesn't happen anymore. There is always a legitimate cause of death. There is always something that they died of because we've got rid of so many other diseases. So that is where we've ended up. And so if coronavirus is added to one of those things, then it'll be another battle, just like cancer and coronary heart diseases. We'll just add it to that list. And yes, we've, we've overcome a plethora, the majority of things that people died from. And then there's a small minority of things that we're still working on, like coronary heart disease and cancer. And influenza. Then we can add coronavirus to that. And I'm sure that in a century or two, we will then do the same like we've done before, in a kind of Zipsalol, Pruita principle, exponential development level, to then wipe out the vast majority, and then end up with something small left. And because we're focusing on the biggest killers now, the main cause of death in a couple of hundred years' time will be something that isn't really a problem at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if we find that in a couple of hundred years' time, we're really concerned about a type of spore or fungus that we haven't been able to kill yet, simply because we've cured cancer and coronary heart disease. Because that is technological improvement. Just do not forget that the average age of people who do die from coronavirus is beyond the average life expectancy. And yes, of course, there are some people who have died that are younger, but the same goes for cancer and coronary heart disease. Maybe you think I'm downplaying the risk, but compared to the other option of these draconian laws that they wish to put in place of all the things that you have to do to protect yourself, I would say I would rather have that liberty because 
you've got your so-called golden years, which are when you're retiring, but that is then mainly just nostalgia for when you were younger. The main point of life is up until you're 60 at the latest, I'd say. There were some people like Colonel Sanders, of course, after 65 who started KFC. But for the vast majority of people, most of their good memories will be, I mean, predominantly teenage and into their 20s, before 30. Between 12 and 30 years old is where you will make your most memories. In the puberty age, really, is where you will make the most memories. But that is the bit which you've really got to focus on and make the most of. Make the most of life when you're young, because no matter how much money you get, you can't get your youth back. So don't capitulate and live in fear, because you're already living your best life. Do the most of what you've got. Like, I might sound like a broken record here, but people like Freddie Mercury, who died young, sure, but do you think he didn't have a fulfilled life? Do do you think that he didn't do a hell of a lot more in his life than most people do living twice as long as him? Because I sure as hell think he did. So why don't we focus on those people? They're sure they die young, but they never have to see their bodies fall apart, for example. Or somebody like Bruce Lee, of course, who died young. The, yeah, but they never saw their bodies fall apart, and maybe they're grateful for that. How many old people or even grandparents do you know who were sad and disappointed, depressed, that they're old and decrepit and can't do the things they used to? And there's a bit in their mind that is still hanging on and remembering what life used to be like. And they're appalled at what they've become. What about these people who died younger, who never had to experience that? They just enjoyed the good times. So, don't don't capitulate. Don't give up your freedom like this. Don't stop yourself from doing the things that are important to you that you'll look back on with glee later. Because as I always say, don't do the things that make you happy. Do the things that make you happy to have done. They're the things that you'll look back on with pride. They're the things that you'll be nostalgic for. And they're the things that will make you a happier person in the long run. But as always, until next time, have a good one.